Okay, so hi everyone and welcome to our uh, Wednesday seminar. So today we are uh, very fortunate to have uh, doc, uh, Professor um, uh, Li Jing Shao uh, with us. Uh, so a few things about Li Jing. Um, uh, so Li Jing ob ob obtained his PhD degree on theoretical physics from the School of uh, Physics at uh, Peking University to 2015. And he actually did part of his uh, PhD in Bonn where we first met. Uh, we, we shared an office uh, together for some time. And then after that, he worked as a junior scientist for two years in the Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics. So the Albert Einstein Institute in, in Potsdam. And then after that, he returned to uh, Bonn for one year as uh, scientific staff uh, at the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy. And since 2018, uh, he's at the Kaffle Institute for uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics at Peking University uh, as an assistant professor. And there he's a group leader of a Max Planck partner group at Peking University, which is funded by the Max Planck Society. And his main research interests include tests of gravity theories, uh, pulsars, neutron stars, uh, gravitational waves, and uh, new physics beyond the standard model of uh, particle physics. And today he's going to talk about one of my, my, my favorite uh, subjects, which, the, which is testing gravity with uh, a radio pulsar. So uh, Li Jing, uh, thanks again for doing that. And um, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, John. Um, it's a, really a, a very good pleasure to uh, give a talk here. So um, um, I just uh, Googled the uh, um, um, creator online. It's really beautiful. It, it is a pity that I cannot be there in person for this talk, but I wish uh, next time I can visit a uh, creator. Oh, okay. that's, uh, that's, a, uh, in, that's uh, a mathematical inevitability that uh, you will visit here. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> yeah, thank you very much. So uh, I will talk about uh, testing gravity with radio pulsars. So uh, for first, uh, let me introduce my institute. Um, my institute is called uh, KIA, the Kavli Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics. It is actually jointly supported by the Peking University and the uh, US um, Kavli Foundation. And we have a very traditional um, building here. And uh, um, I belong to the group that uh, works on the gravitational physics and high energy phenomena. And I have uh, a small group here uh, with a few postdocs and the students. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk. And uh, uh, I will mostly talk about uh, um, binary pulse timing and we will focus on uh, the, the test, gravity test that can do uh, with pulse timing. So uh, for the standard mode extension part here, the, the, the third part, because this is a uh, uh, a bit of mathematical, I will go through it very quickly and I will focus on the, the, um, the blue um, outlines here um, uh, for my talk. And if you have any question uh, during my talk, you are very welcome to speak up and ask directly. Um, yeah. So uh, let's start with the uh, gravity test. So we know the, the modern physics, the currently um, the, 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 the diagram for the physics is composed of um, two theories. So one is the standard model, which is described by the quantum field theory. The other is general relativity. It's to describe the, the gravitation and the space time. So basically this is the current uh, knowledge of the physics and the, uh, the Lagrangian of the, of the world is basically uh, in, on these two t-shirts. This is how our physical, uh, how our physical world um, works. Okay, so uh, this is the, the Lagrangian of the universe. And uh, um, unfortunately, the Lagrangian, there are two parts of the Lagrangian. One is the standard model of particle physics. It describes the uh, uh, strong, weak, and electromagnetic interactions of the universe. And the other is the space time. These two languages, they are quite different. So on one hand, we have quantum field theory to describe uh, uh, the three uh, interactions. And on the other hand, we have general relativity to describe uh, uh, the curved space time. So these uh, two, uh, two theories, they are not compatible with each other. So this immediately raises a very serious um, question to a physicist. 
So uh, the quantum field theory and the generativity, they cannot be both right. So at least one of them uh, is not uh, uh, fundamentally correct. So this is what uh, uh, the many people, including Albert Einstein himself, um, are working on, try to search for a, a fundamental unified theory called the quantum gravity. This uh, task is not done yet. So uh, many people are still working on this. So uh, a short summary of the situation, uh, theoretical physics is very beautiful, but it's not yet complete. And uh, here, gravity, it's, it's, it's separated uh, uh, from the other three fundamental forces. So maybe gravity is holding the key to the next level of our understanding of the physical world. Okay, so this is the motivation that we want to study gravity in a much, much, uh, uh, a much, much fundamental way. And I wanted to test the gravity theories from uh, uh, many, many uh, experiments. So binary pulsar timing is such a, one of the uh, most uh, powerful experiment to start uh, um, gravity theories. So I will give a brief introduction to the binary pulsar timing technology. So pulsars, pulsars, they are just uh, rotating magnetized neutron stars uh, uh, in the universe because their rotation is very stable. So this is, this is, is because the, they are larger momentum of inertia and also uh, the small external torque. So, so uh, the angular momentum is conserved in this system and uh, the rotation of the process can be used as, as a clock, as a fundamental clock uh, in our universe. So this is a, a very powerful uh, clock that can probe uh, many useful things. So pulsars are clock, and uh, they are not only clock, they are also very uh, precision clock. So here I just give one example. This is uh, uh, the recently published number for the uh, spin frequency of this pulsar. So here, if you count the digits, you can see here in total are 16 digits. So if you remember in our computer system, the floating number, they only have 16 dig significant digits. So uh, in the pulsar timing in this field, we are really reaching a, a, a very fundamental level, even for the floating numbers. So it's a, a very precision experiment because the pulsars are such precision uh, clocks. So uh, for the pulsar, we usually plot the pulsars in this, uh, this diagram. This is, is the, uh, the horizontal axis is the pulsar pulse period. So, the vertical axis is the time derivative of this um, pulse, pulse period. So basically, we have two classes of pulses. So here, uh, the, the, the ones with the red circles, they are in binary systems. They, most of them are millisecond pulses. So they are, because their pulse period is in the range of a couple of milliseconds to tens of milliseconds. So this is a millisecond process. They are uh, the most precise uh, clocks uh, uh, in the universe. So we wanted to use this millisecond process to do some very useful experiment. So one of such experiment is called the pulsar timing. So basically we have larger radio telescopes uh, here. It's, it's on the earth. It's the earth is moving around this sun, uh, this, uh, this yellow sun here. So this uh, large radio telescopes, see, record the, this, uh, this, uh, um, the times of, of arrival from these pulses. So this is a very, ex very simple experiment. You just uh, record the times of arrival of the pulses. And because it's, uh, it's, it's uh, simple, it's, the emitter is very powerful. So uh, in this uh, times of arrivals, it basically uh, encodes information about uh, the uh, how the how the telescope moves around the sun and how the pulsar moves around its, his companion and also some information about the interstellar medium. So here we will focus on the, sorry, we will focus on the binary motion uh, for, for this uh, pulsar around the companion. So uh, here's just one example shows a larger radio telescope uh, uh, that uh, make this uh, experiment. This is a 500 meter um, spherical uh, telescope in China. It's the currently the largest radio telescope on the Earth. And uh, uh, it's uh, very useful to do the pulsar timing. So pulsars, for, for this pulsar timing experiment, 
they can do many things, including to test the strong gravity and the dense nuclear matters because neutron stars they are um, very dense. And we can also do some unique astrophysics. So here I will focus on this. Uh, for this is a test of strong gravity. Okay, so this uh, uh, process they are not only very precise, they are also um, you know in a very curved space time because the neutron stars they are almost a black hole. Okay, so from the pulsar timing, uh, we uh, we basically uh, get the motion of the pulsar from the pulsar timing, and this motion is controlled by the uh, mutual interaction between the pulsar and its companion. And, uh, and because our measurement is so precise, you know, we can measure uh, many effects even beyond the Newtonian gravity. So you know, in Newtonian gravity is basically the, the, the capillary orbit. And uh, uh, in general relativity, uh, we can have the precession of the orbit and also uh, because of the radiation of gravitational waves, the orbital gets smaller and smaller as time goes on. And uh, this kind of effect can be uh, uh, recognized in the pulsar timing data. Okay, so here uh, in this table, I show an example of on, on how we how precisely we can measure the parameters from pulsar timing. So here in this uh, little uh, uh, red box, you can see some measurement here. So for example, the uh, pre austral advance rate. So here you can see we can measure to um, micro degree per year so to such a precision uh, for one of the pulsar, and for the uh, for the shrinkage of the orbiter, so you know, because the gravitational wave uh, take away energy from the orbiter, and the orbiter gets smaller and smaller, we can measure this this uh, this shrinkage uh, to a precision like a micrometer uh, per day. So this is a very very high precision. Uh, if you even think about this process, they are um, thousands of light years away from us. So for such a, a measurement precision, it's really um, uh, very remarkable. So this is a, a pre precision uh, pulsar time experiment that we can do this kind of measurement. Okay, so um, for, our, for our pulsar timing, we have a model basically to measure different effects. So here I've been, I just show the, uh, some, uh, some um, parameters that we can directly get from the pulsar timing data. And these parameters, they depend on only two unknowns. So, which are the two masses of the binary system. So uh, uh, because of this, we can uh, plot each measurement uh, as a curve on this mass mass diagram. So this is uh, the horizontal axis is uh, the mass of the pulsar. So this is uh, the mass of the companion. So if we can measure two parameters, we can get an intersection and uh, we can get the two masses here. And if we measure more than two parameters, uh, we can perform a gravity test to see if these two uh, these, uh, these curves they meet at one point. If they don't, this is not a consistent uh, gravity theory. If they do, then we can get the precision of the of this test. So basically, this is what uh, uh, Huss and Taylor uh, done uh, in, uh, for, for their uh, first discovered binary pulsar system. And this uh, win the Nobel Prize uh, in physics uh, to the uh, to Husserl Taylor, and uh, this is uh, 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 this plot is basically the the first uh, indirect uh, um, evidence for the existence of gravitational waves because uh, the measurement of PB dot. So here is uh, the time derivative of the orbital period is caused by the uh, emission of gravitational waves, and this also advanced the development of the of the laser interferometer, uh, and, uh, and later they discovered the uh, um, gravitational waves directly on the Earth. Okay, so this is an example uh, for the test of gravity. And uh, the currently the best test of gravity comes from this uh, the so-called double pulsar. For this system, uh, the two neutron stars, uh, so, so for the, the companion is also a neutron star, and this uh, two neutron stars, they were both observed as pulsars. So you can do a double line measurement for this system, and you can uh, plot the, 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 the result on this mass mass diagram. And this result is so precise. So here, the, the each, each width of the line uh, means the measurement uncertainty uh, of, of each measurement. So, so this measurement are so precise, you, uh, 
you you even need to uh, zoom in um, a lot and to see this measurement errors. So here uh, is the, the zoom in of this um, intersection point. And you can see from here, uh, this uh, is a very, very precise measurement here. And uh, uh, for all these parameters, they meet at one point. So, so uh, this pulse provide one of the best tests uh, for the gravity. And the result was published last year. And uh, uh, it's a very important result for gravity test. Okay, so a very short summary for this, uh, for this test. So they are very sensitive, pulses are very sensitive to tiny changes in the orbit and they are uh, provide a very uh, excellent test bed for the gravity theory. So uh, because of this, we can do uh, many tests to the alternative gravity theories. So here I will very briefly uh, uh, introduce the standard model extension, uh, which is the pulsars can, uh, can test. So here is the Lagrangian for, for the for Rung's uh, invariant theory, which can be uh, the standard model of particle physics and the general relativity. And uh, uh, because some quantum, quantum gravity predict the breakdown of the Lorentz symmetry, we can add the Lorentz violating terms here. And uh, uh, there is a framework called the standard model extension to do this um, addition of this Lorentz violating terms uh, in a systematic way. And uh, the additional terms, they basically break the Lorentz symmetry of the space time and they introduce the uh, extra interaction in the gravity. And we can uh, um, use this uh, framework to predict what will happen to a binary system and try to uh, constrain these extra terms. So this is uh, the idea behind the, the testing of, uh, of the standard mode extension uh, using binary pulsar timing. Okay, so I will go through this very quickly because I, I wanted to leave my time for um, for the other topics. So here, uh, basically, you can uh, you can add a different kind of term because you can add this minimal mass dimension for terms, and you can also add add the uh, add the CPT violating terms to this Lagrangian. Uh, this will introduce some velocity dependent uh, um, relative acceleration between two bodies. And you can also introduce uh, some um, equivalence principle violating terms. And you can, uh, this will introduce, uh, introduce the, uh, the relative acceleration, which is proportional to the, uh, to, the, to the gravitational bonding energy of the system. So all these kind of terms, they can be uh, tested uh, via the uh, pulsar timing because the pulsar timing really maps out the, the orbit to a very good precision and the tiny uh, modification of this orbit uh, will be visible in the pulsar timing data. And uh, uh, this is, a, uh, I, I'm sorry, I go through this uh, very quickly because I want to talk about other topics, but uh, I want to uh, pass a key message to you is like uh, uh, this, uh, all these kind of modifications including the CPT violation and the equivalence principle violation, and also uh, some interesting uh, coupling between uh, matter and gravity, they can be uh, tested by uh, pulsars. So binary pulsars are really very good to uh, perform tests on the small modification on the orbit. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, this is section, and I want to focus on the other section. So here is the, the strong field gravity. This uh, because the pulsars they are uh, uh, as I said they are almost a black holes. If if they uh, collapse a little bit, they will be a black hole. And here, uh, immediately raises uh, an important question uh, because in this strong uh, gravity field, there will be uh, some non perturbative strong field effect, as I will show below. Uh, this uh, this non perturbative strong field uh, gravity. They cannot be tested, uh, for example, in the solar system, because in our solar system, the gravity field is very weak, and we cannot uh, see this larger um, uh, possible larger deviation from general relativity. So uh, this is a, a plot. Um, uh, this is a plot, a very important plot for the gravity test. So here, the horizontal excess is um, the typical velocity of a system, um, so uh, divided by the speed of light. So for example, uh, our uh, Earth and uh, the solar system move at a relative uh, velocity uh, at the 10 to minus three. 
uh, of the speed of light. Uh, so the y-axis is the space-time curvature. And uh, here there are, are, are different classes of experiment that test uh, different regions in this parameter space. So for example, the, cos the cosmology test uh, test at a very small space-time curvature region, and the solar system test this uh, post-Newtonian region, which means uh, the, uh, the velocity is, uh, is small compared to the speed of light. But the neutron stars and the black holes, they provide some test bed in the strong field, in the strong field. This is becoming more and more popular in, in recent years. Uh, as we know, uh, the measurement of gravitational waves and also the black hole images, they start to probe this uh, upper right corner uh, in this parameter space. In this parameter space, the space time uh, is very strongly curved and uh, there could be some uh, very large velocity, you know, uh, 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 by large, I mean the velocity is comparable to the speed of light. And this region is called the strong field region. Okay, so I give an example uh, to show uh, in this strong field, the gravity can be much, much different from uh, Einstein general relativity. So here is just a simple example. Uh, it's called the scalar tensor gravity. So here we add some uh, very canonical terms uh, to the uh, scalar field and add a conformal coupling of this uh, scalar field to the metric G mu nu. Okay, so in this uh, uh, scalar tensor gravity, uh, we can start with some very simple cases. For example, we can set the, the potential to zero and choose some uh, very simple uh, form for this conformal coupling. So in such kind of, of, of a theory, uh, people discovered that there can be non perturbative effect, non perturbative strong field effect. For example, so here is the, uh, the, the plot shows the uh, fractional gravitational energy on the horizontal axis, which means uh, how much gravitational energy here it is uh, for an object, for, uh, for, for, for an object and divided by the uh, rest mass, the, the MC square of this object. So this value is extremely small for everything in the solar system. So here, basically, it's, it's almost zero for the solar system. And uh, uh, it can be larger for neutron star. For neutron star, this number is about uh, uh, 0 0.15 or two, up to 0 0.2. And for the black holes, it is, um, it is uh, one half. OK, so the y-axis shows the deviation from general relativity in such kind of uh, scalar tensor gravity. As you can see here, there is a sudden increase for this deviation from general relativity for the strong field object. So this increase is, a, is a really very sudden because here I plot in, in, a, in a log scale already. So if I plot in a linear scale, this is a very sudden uh, increase in, in this plot. So this shows uh, the weak field can be very close to Einstein's relativity. And the strong field can be very different from Einstein's relativity. So this is, this is very interesting to us because there are parameter space which allow a very large deviation from Einstein's uh, general relativity and still um, uh, preserves the, uh, the, the many experiments uh, that, uh, that were performed in the solar system. Okay, so this is uh, called the spontaneous scalarization uh, for neutron stars. It's uh, very important uh, to the uh, to the gravity test. It is uh, uh, actually can be explained by Landau's fifth transition theory. Uh, I will not go into detail here, but uh, 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 such a uh, uh, phenomena is uh, is very important for strong field gravity. So uh, a key message here is that uh, strong field gravity can be very different from weak field gravity. So although we have very good uh, experiment in the weak field, we can still have larger deviation from general relativity in the strong field. So this is why the strong field uh, uh, systems are very uh, interesting to us. Okay, so here is, is John's favorite uh, um, pulsar white dwarf system. So this system can uh, is used was used to put a very stringent uh, limit on such kind of strong field deviation. So uh, this system is composed of uh, a pulsar and a white dwarf as a, as a, as a companion. So white dwarf is, uh, here is basically uh, a weak field object. The pulsar is a neutron star, is a strong field object. 
So for this system, there is a, uh, an asymmetry, um, uh, you know, from the point of view of the gravitational physics, there is an asymmetry for these two objects. This asymmetry will introduce a dipole radiation in, in, in this system. And this dipole radiation will produce an extra uh, PB dot. PB dot means the time derivative of the orbital period. This uh, dipole radiation is proportional to the, the difference of, of these two objects. And uh, uh, because, as I said, there is a, a, an asymmetry for their gravitational behavior, this difference can be very large. And uh, uh, from positive timing, you, when you, after you measure the PB dot, you can put a very good constraint on this uh, strong field uh, spontaneous scalarization. So this, uh, uh, this is a test uh, performed by uh, John and also um, Apollo Flair and uh, uh, two, for these two systems. This, uh, these are the best limit up to now uh, uh, for this kind of uh, um, spontaneous scalarization phenomenon. Okay, but uh, this kind of uh, spontaneous scalarization can also be uh, equation of state dependent. So the neutron star equation of state is uh, not very certain up to now, although we started to measure them uh, uh, from X ray satellites and uh, the gravitational wave, gravitational wave detectors, but uh, uh, it's still there are a large uncertainty in the equation of state. So, so this uh, scalarization also depends on the equation of state. So we proposed uh, to use multiple systems to uh, cover the whole uh, mass range of neutron stars, try to get a uh, 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 a whole uh, a landscape to put uh, uh, the best uh, constraint on, on the spontaneous scalarization. So uh, by combining neutron star wide of systems, it's possible to put uh, a, a combined limit on the uh, scalarization. So which is important uh, because of the, uh, because of our uh, ignorance of the equation of state uh, uh, for now. So this kind of study uh, were uh, updated recently by a student from my group. And uh, uh, the current is the best picture here. Uh, the best limit is here. So uh, each line here, each colored line here is uh, the prediction in the scalar tensor theory on the uh, scalar charge, on the scalar charge. And uh, uh, because we have so many systems, they are very well measured. Uh, uh, so we can put uh, the limit uh, on this deviation for Einstein's generativity at a level of 1%. So this is uh, the best limit we uh, have up to now. This is combined from uh, here, I think it's seven systems, seven binary process systems. And uh, um, if, the, if uh, in the nature there is a scalar as the neutron star, its scalar charge cannot be larger at 1% uh, um, uh, in this scalar tensor theory. So this is an uh, important limit for the uh, for the scalar, scalar tensor theory. Okay, so we, I will also go to another topic uh, for massive gravity. So uh, as we can see, so here the, the radiative tests are very powerful. Uh, by constraining the dipole radiation uh, in a binary pulsar system, we can constrain uh, the scalarization beha uh, behavior in the strong field. But uh, this is not only uh, powerful in this dipole radiation, it's also uh, very powerful in other aspect, for example, in the massive gravity. So here is a Lagrangian for the massive gravity. So here is this, uh, this blank, uh, this uh, blank terms are basically the expansion uh, in the, of general relativity. So you can add a mass term for the graviton. Here, this is the, the unique way to add a, a mass term if you uh, observe the, the following two conditions that uh, the, the GI is recovered if the mass term is to go to zero and, uh, and you want a standard form for the wave equation. If you observe these two looms, uh, two looms this is the, the unique term uh, in this linearized gravity theory. If you add this term, you can calculate the, the orbital dynamics of a binary system. So uh, you can find that there will be a gravitational back reaction, which is proportional to the uh, mass square of the uh, of the graviton. So you will have an extra term, extra contribution to, to, to your uh, emission of gravitational waves. This extra contribution will take away extra energy and accelerate uh, the, the, the shrinkage of your uh, binary orbit. So, uh, so by uh, using the 
uh, very well, very precisely measure the, uh, the very precisely measure the orbital decay, and you can uh, put a very good constraint on uh, uh, this, uh, all this uh, gravitational mass. Gravitational mass. So basically, uh, we use the, uh, about a 10, type of, uh, 10 binary process and uh, use some uh, uh, Bayesian framework and uh, put the combined limit on the, on the uh, mass of the graviton. Okay, this is the one example in the linearized gravity, linearized field poly theory. And uh, you can also put a, a limit on the other kind of, um, of cosmological uh, gravity theories. So here is an example. Uh, this is called the cubic Galileo. It doesn't matter if, if this is Lagrangian, uh, um, it it's, looks unfamiliar to you, but uh, in this kind of uh, cubic Galileo theory, it's, there is a, screen, uh, a mechanism called a, called a, called a uh, screening mechanism, which can be used to explain uh, the dark energy behavior. So uh, in this kind of theory, you can also calculate the uh, orbital dynamics uh, for a binary system. You can find the extra uh, radiate, radiating uh, channel as well. Uh, they are including the monopole radiation and the dipole radiation and the quadrupole radiation. This radiation will again uh, take away the orbital energy from the system and uh, uh, introduce extra contribution to our pulsar timing data. So by using the, uh, the, the pulsar timing data, uh, you can put a very good constraint on the uh, graviton mass as well. So here uh, by using, um, I think it's 14 binary pulsar system, the best measured systems, uh, we can uh, put a combined uh, limit on the graviton mass to a very, very small uh, um, uh, value here. It's uh, uh, 10 to minus 28 um, EV. So uh, if, a, if a graviton mass is larger than this value, it can be observed uh, with the pulsar timing already. So this is the current uh, uh, best limit from pulsar timing on the mass of the graviton. And in the future, if we discover uh, pulsar black hole systems, uh, this limit can be even uh, improved uh, e even better. And the uh, uh, pulsar black hole systems are, are a very important goal uh, in the pulsar community that uh, uh, we expect to discover it uh, with, with, uh, with uh, for example, the SKA telescope, which is on the construction right now. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, SKA array. This is the uh, uh, it's an array. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a radio array that is on the construction. It is uh, actually started the construction uh, from last year. From last year, it has already in the construction phase and it will be finished in 2028. Uh, 2028. And uh, it will um, observe uh, uh, the, the, a, a very large portion of the sky and it's very likely to find a, a, a pulsar black hole system by this equipment. Okay, so the last topic I would like to talk about is uh, to use the pulsar timing to test some properties of dark matter. So here I will show you that uh, not only the, the radiative test that I talked about uh, earlier is important from pulsar timing, some conservative dynamics is also, um, is also very important in many aspects. Okay, so, so first uh, the Einstein relativity is uh, uh, based on two principles. One is called the Galileo's relativity principle. The other is the Equimus principle. The Equimus principle is, a, is a very fundamental to Einstein's relativity. It basically tells you that uh, uh, locally, gravity is equivalent to the accelerator system. So, so you learn this from the textbook of relativity. And uh, from, this, uh, from this principle, it really gives you uh, the the, the, the conclusion that the gravitation is the curved space time. So this is a, is a very important because from here, you basically from, uh, go from gravity directly into geometry. So it's the, it's the, it's the geometry that provides the, the, the gravity interaction. Okay, so th uh, this is uh, tested uh, to very high precision, uh, in particular for this uh, uh, macroscopic satellite. Actually, they published a paper, uh, so the final result uh, um, a few days back, uh, the limit has even improved uh, um, by one order of magnitude. Um, the, the equivalence principle is agreed uh, to the 10 to minus 15 uh, at this very precise level. 
Okay, so this is actually, uh, this test actually are uh, basically the test in the weak field. As I said, uh, in the strong field, this test may be modified. Uh, so because in, for, an, for an object, uh, for most common object, the gravitational energy, self energy inside this object is very, very small. It's very, very small. So, uh, but for neutron star, this gravitational energy can be uh, comparable to the rest mass of the neutron star. So they will introduce some nonlinearity uh, in this kind of uh, strong field systems. So for example, here is the, uh, a parameter characterize the fractional uh, gravitational energy uh, for a project. And uh, for neutron star, you can uh, reach, for this parameter, you can reach 20% for neutron stars because neutron stars are really, um, really strong field objects. Okay, so uh, neutron stars are very good to test the Aquinas principle. And uh, uh, for a binary neutron star in the galaxy potential, uh, for, for a binary neutron star, uh, for a binary system, uh, basically they are dropping, dropping uh, in the uh, gravitational field of the galaxy. So this, this, this drop, actually, if it do not observe the Aquinas principle, there will be a uh, introduce some extra uh, dynamics in this uh, binary orbit. So this was studied uh, 30 years ago by Damo and Schaeffer. And they, in, they discovered that uh, uh, the violation of the Aquinas principle will introduce a very characteristic evolution of the eccentricity uh, vector in a binary system. So uh, uh, this is a mathematical formalism for the for the evolution of uh, essential of the eccentricity vector uh, when the Lorentz symmetry is violated. So if the Lorentz symmetry, if the equivalent principle is violated, there will be an extra term, and uh, your observed eccentricity will be a superposition, a vector superposition of two two uh, contributions, and this this will introduce a very characteristic uh, behavior in your times of arrival in the positive timing data. And by carefully analyzing the positive timing data, you can, uh, you can recover or you can constrain this violation of the equivalence principle. So the, uh, the best used binary process system in this test is uh, this pulsar, it's uh, pulsar G1713. And uh, by using 20 years data, uh, they get a very good constraint on the universality of free four of a pulsar system uh, in, the in the gravitational potential of the Milky Way. And you can constrain the, the difference uh, uh, for this, this acceleration in, in the galaxy uh, up to a level of, uh, two, of 0 0.2%. So this is not comparable, it's not comparable to the test in the weak field, but this is uh, the test in the strong field and they encode much more information than the test in the work field. And uh, the best, actually, the best limit comes from the triple pulsar system. So this is uh, uh, the unique triple pulsar system. And uh, there is a pulsar which has a, a wide off companion. They so have uh, an orbiter about 1.6 day. And uh, there is a third body, which is also a wide off. See, this third body has a computer, uh, has an orbiter with this inner binary in an orbit about one year. It's uh, 327 days. So this system uh, is, a, is a very unique system to provide a, a strong principle test. And uh, because the inner binary, they are also, you know, uh, from the viewpoint of the general relativity, uh, they are also uh, uh, free falling uh, in the um, gravitational field produced by the third body. And uh, uh, by this, by timing uh, this pulsar here, uh, people were able to uh, achieve very good tests uh, uh, in this field. And they can get the universality of free fall up to the precision of, um, of one in million. And this is, uh, is, uh, this is a very important work in testing the strong Aquinas principle test. Okay, so this is the equivalence principle test uh, from the positive timing because the positive timing changes the orbiter and the orbiter is very well uh, mapped by the positive timing experiment. And uh, we can use the positive timing data to put a constraint on the strong principle uh, violation. And uh, uh, here, 
uh, we proposed a new test, try to use this uh, strong Christ principle test to test the property of dark matter. So, uh, so we know we have dark matters and there are many experimenters try to search for dark matter, the shorter range experiment, uh, you know, the underground uh, um, experimenter try to search for the shorter range interaction uh, of dark matter uh, between dark matter and ordinary matters. So here uh, we propose a new test to test the possible uh, long range interaction between dark matter and, uh, and ordinary matters. And uh, this long range uh, interaction, uh, uh, we call it the fifth force. They can introduce a very similar behavior uh, to the a binary process system. And uh, it's a very similar behavior to what is predicted uh, in the strong Quinn's principle test. And it can change the, the orbital dynamics of a binary system and uh, uh, can reveal its signal in the uh, process timing data. So because uh, in, our in our binary process systems, there is a larger material difference uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for the two bodies. So uh, in our test, we use the neutron star wide off system. So their material is very different. And they also have very different uh, uh, gravitational bonding energy. So these two, two uh, facts helped us to test this fifth force uh, from dark matter. And uh, our... Uh, our conclusion is, is the following. If there is a long range of fifth force uh, between dark matter and ordinary matter, it uh, must be smaller than 1% of our gravity, our gravity interaction. Otherwise, it will uh, uh, contradict the observation uh, from this uh, binary pulsar system, this uh, G1713 observational data. So this is the, uh, one of the best limit obtained uh, for the wrong range interaction between dark matter and ordinary matters. So uh, and, uh, and, uh, in the future, if we can observe binary pulsars close to the galaxy center, uh, you know, the, uh, towards the galaxy center, the density of dark matter is much higher than around the solar system. And uh, if we can find a binary pulsar there, uh, they will produce an even better test uh, for this uh, fifth force between dark matter and our uh, traditional matters. Okay, so uh, I talked about the many aspects uh, uh, using the uh, pulse observation uh, to test uh, uh, the gravity theory and the property of dark matters. So the key idea here is, is the binary pulse timing. So you can really map out the details of a binary, uh, a binary orbital motion. And uh, this is so precise, it, uh, it uh, makes you uh, can look into very tiny changes in the orbit and uh, give you a constraint uh, on an uh, alternative explanation if you if your theory can introduce this kind of tiny uh, tiny changes. Okay, so I hope I have convinced you the following point. So first, uh, radio pulsars are very precision clocks and they are very sensitive to any kind of um, deviation uh, in generativity if, if they uh, reveal them in the uh, orbital motion. And uh, this because of this very simple and very powerful, and a very precise experiment. They are very useful uh, to test many aspects of fundamental theory. For example, they can test the space-time symmetry. They can test the strong field uh, effect that, uh, uh, that are predicted for neutron stars. And they can also test the massive gravity, strong quiz principle, and also uh, some properties of dark matter. So uh, from our current other test, we found uh, the, the the, 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 the data are still consistent with uh, what Einstein generativity predicts. And we put a, a new uh, limit at, uh, at a new level uh, to many uh, fundamental uh, uh, violations of, the, of the, you know, um, the, the, the fundamental principles. So that's, uh, um, the, uh, that's my talk. Thank you very much. If you have any question, I'm very happy to answer. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Eugene. So I would like a clap for, for everyone. Uh, so uh, I think we have, uh, we have time for, uh, for questions. So if anyone has any question, please uh, either speak up or raise your hand or use the, the chat to um, type your question. So I have a question since you're showing um, fast uh, right yeah. now. <laughs> so, 
so is it uh, um, uh, I, I is it now I, I, I guess uh, fast is doing a, um, a deep survey for new pulsars now right uh, so is there any uh, any new pulsar that uh, you know will will become useful for for gravity tests in the in the future? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, uh, yes. So for the past years, uh, there are a few um, a pulsar survey conducted uh, at, a, at a fast telescope. So because the, the fast telescope is it's, it's very huge and the, the timing, the, the sensitivity to, to flux is very, um, it's very sensitive. And uh, currently, uh, they have published about 400 new pulsars from fast. So, um, uh, Many of them uh, are followed up by other telescopes. Um, they were discovered at the first and followed up by other telescopes. There are a few uh, interesting systems. Uh, um, uh, some work are on the preparation and uh, some are published. There are, are some uh, millisecond pulsar and the pulsars in binary uh, and, and some relativistic uh, orbits and so on. But as a, uh, because the operation of FAST is, is, you know, is only since uh, a few years back, the timing data has not been accumulated enough uh, to um, to beat you know the, the long existing uh, uh, data. Uh, so uh, the test is not uh, great yet, but there are potential um, systems that can do uh, much better than what we have achieved now. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, you know this is not the fast is open to international calls. Uh, you can also propose. Uh, do some proposal and uh, uh, to use some faster time. It's 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 quite amazing. And uh, you are also very welcome to visit the uh, the the you know the faster site. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's quite good. Yes, I, I mean I, I I would love to. I mean um I'm, I I already have uh, you know some ideas about uh, proposing with uh, uh you know uh, cool and uh, we have uh, some ideas about the project and we already have some data but i would i would love to visit and as soon as the it's possible again <laughs> um but yeah so i and the, my, my second question was about you know i'm, I'm I, you know i you know i, I follow this test of a scalar tensor uh, gravity yeah. very very closely and they keep improving with time and they will keep improving uh, with time even if we don't i guess if even if we don't discover new systems uh so i guess is that but is there i wonder i mean we keep pushing these limits to higher and higher precision but is there still any physical motivation for you know pushing these limits even even to even higher precision is there any room left for deviations that is physically motivated? Yeah, I think that this is a, a very important question. So uh, for this uh, very traditional, the, the Damo Esposito Brasa theory, um, they have set the, the potential to zero and uh, you know, the, you know, in, in their fundamental uh, Lagrangian, there is a potential term, they are set it to zero and they have considered the, um, the, the simple um, conformal factor. And in that theory, uh, Basically, we have constrained it to uh, really very high precision. But uh, if you, um, you know, release a little bit of the underlying assumption, for example, if you allow um, a, a mass term in the potential, yeah. there will be immediately there will be the uh, the Yukawa suppression uh, kind of force uh, appear in in the, in the system because you have a a mass term for the for the scalar field, and for such kind of um, for such a kind of uh, theory, uh, if the Yukawa, if the competent wavelength of the scalar field is smaller than your orbit, uh, this extra force will be highly suppressed due to this exponential Yukawa suppression. And for this kind of theory, it's very hard to constrain it uh, uh, through the through the orbital decay because it do not predict a uh, significant dipole radiation. But uh, we recently discovered for such kind of a theory. It predicts a larger deviation in the momentum of inertia of a pulsar, and also in the tidal deformability of a pulsar. So, so if we can measure the uh, momentum of inertia, for example, um, we in principle we can measure it uh, with radio telescopes, and the tidal deformability 
uh, we, in principle, we can measure it with binary neutron star merger from aggression waves. So this kind of new measurement will still provide a very insightful um, um, bonds on the scalar tensor theory. And they are quite well motivated because a, a, a mass term for the scalar field is also uh, very useful for cosmology. So <laughs> there are many aspects that we can still uh, do, but the most traditional one, the Damo Esposito for us, uh, 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 theory, it's uh, it's very severely constrained already. Yeah. I see. Thank you. So I guess, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, LIGO will become more more important in, in uh, constraining uh, this ma massive theories. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a massive charges in, in the in the yeah. future. Yeah, but the limit from power timing is also very complementary to to what uh, um, the LIGO vehicle can. Can okay, so yeah. that's yeah, that's good to hear. I mean, <laughs> that uh, we're still in business. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, other questions for Legion? All right. So, uh, three, two, point one. No, if not, so Legion, uh, thank you again for uh, uh, accepting our invitation. And uh, hopefully we can repeat this in, in person in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone.